everybody. Uh, I'm Jimmy and welcome to Stewart Arts. Uh, my buddy Skip and I just took a ride to uh, Port St. Lucie where I picked up this Ingram kitchen clock or wall clock if you will. I think it's a late 1800s piece. I love the woodwork on it. Uh, the gentleman did not know if it worked or not and said here's all the parts that go with it. I think that uh, we will service the movement even though it seems to be running well. And I think the majority of the work on this clock is just going to be in doing the cabinet repairs. So hope you'll follow along as we make all the little repairs and get this ready for the next century of operation. So here's the little parts that uh, were supplied with the, the clock. I've got the pendulum now. I don't know if this is a correct pendulum. Uh, we've got some wooden pieces here that go with the gingerbread and they looks like they are all there. They just need to be uh, sanded and, and glued back in place. So that should be fairly easy to take care of. Uh, the dial I took off in order to inspect the, uh, the movement and the dial is actually in pretty nice shape. It needs a little bit of cleaning, but I don't want to do too much. I kind of like the patina. Came with two keys. This is a, a number seven for an Ansonia clock. So it's not, doesn't go with this clock. Actually, this one is a little sloppy, so it may be a number six. And then this is a number seven key, but it's made in India, so it's obviously an aftermarket key. But it fits perfectly on this clock. And then we've got this little piece of wood, and I know exactly what that's for. This little piece of wood, I believe, is needed to replace the glass on this clock. When I first saw it, I thought, boy, that glass is sure clear, but actually it's non-existent. So this little piece right here is a backer uh, to uh, put the glass in. So what do you say, Skip? Should we cut a piece of glass? Let's cut some glass. Let's do it. It's an interesting design. It has a hinge at the top and then it's on a pin at the bottom. And that's the first time I've seen that design. There's the door. It's in good shape. It's amazing, actually, that it's in such good shape. Okay. Yes, sir. Alrighty. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. How's that going to work out, Skip? I think it's just what you were looking for. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I enjoyed that. That is so cool. I can't even believe it. Okay. So I've had the clock sitting here for a few days now, and uh, it seems like it wants to run. Uh, the uh, mainspring was totally wound tight, and it'll run for 12 or 14 hours, and then it wants to stop. So I think the mainspring is probably in need of lubrication. And uh, just looking at the pivots from the outside, it doesn't look too bad. But we'll go ahead and take this movement out and get it as cleaned up as we can, and then we'll work on the case. So we're just going to flip it over here. Well, there are Phillips head screws uh, holding this back panel on, so I think we know that this clock has been worked on before because these screws would not be correct for the period, but that's okay. So this is interesting. There's a little mark here, 885U with three little marks, so I wonder if that's a uh, clockmaker that worked on this, and it makes me wonder, was that 1885 or 19? 85. We'll probably never know. This movement is really quite clean. I hope that all I have to do is a little bit of lubrication. I had a good close look at this movement. It's really in really good shape. This is a 1879 a patent date on this one, so it probably was made in the 80s, maybe. Uh, it's in very, very good condition. The only thing I can see that's wrong with it is that the, uh, the spring here, the, the lubrication is a little bit gummy on it. And I think this thing has been serviced at some point in the past because I see that we have some bushings. And I don't know that those are factory bushings. They might be. I'm going to have to do a little investigation to figure out if that's uh, what we've got here. But everything is really in good shape. The, the pivots look tight. I don't see any slop in these holes here. So... We're just going to do a good general cleaning, and hopefully that'll prevent it from uh, stopping after 12 or 18 hours like it has been. 
first step here is to release the energy uh, from the springs here. So I've got this letdown tool and we'll let down this is the time train spring and you see how big it's getting. So that thing uh, was really gummed up. I think it just doesn't want to release. So we'll get these uh, released and that way I can get in there and clean these and lubricate them as best I can. I don't have the equipment necessary to take them out and do a proper uh, unwind of them, but I think I can get them good enough to run for days and days. And we'll do the alarm side here and get all the energy off of those. All right, so we'll go over to the mineral spirits bath and clean this up. All right, I just got just a little bit of uh, mineral spirits here and uh, just kind of washing the pivots and getting sort of the dark greasy stuff off and uh, this thing is actually pretty clean I'm really surprised at how clean it is it must have been serviced not too long ago I'm thinking uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the parts washer uh, so I'm just gonna rinse it off with hot water here. I've changed the water out on my parts cleaner and I'm just using some dishwashing liquid liquid in it. Uh, I only want to cut the, uh, the grease and that's in the pivot. Uh, 45 minutes or so. This started out as clean water and just after a minute or so we're already getting real cloudy here so I think this thing is going to do a, a nice job of uh, getting all that old uh, oil out of the pivots there thing is nice and dry and so I'm just gonna put a dab on each of the pivots here and uh, we're just about ready to run this thing it's really clean I tell you I'm very happy with how clean this thing is so I have a feeling this thing is gonna run nice so I flooded these springs and uh, what I'm doing now is uh, I'm gonna let these down and exercise them so that uh, that lubricant is on every surface of the spring and I actually feel like we're there so I'll let it down and wind it up and let it down and wind it up and then we'll exercise this thing we're gonna let it run for a few days just to make sure that uh, we resolve the issues All right, let it freewheel just a little bit. Make sure all the pivots are nice and lubricated and it sure seems like it wants to run. And just cleaning up some of the excess here. Some of the surfaces are kind of wet from the Slick 50 there, but I'll get most of it off. Of it. And uh, place the movement on the backboard here and we'll let it run while we work on the cabinet see how it does and I've got the backboard clamped in the vise and uh, it's roughly set beat wise and so we'll let it run for a couple of days and hopefully she'll run without stopping fingers crossed it's nice to know that if you do certain things right you can depend on a result. Uh, looking at the cabinet for this clock, uh, it's in really very good shape. Uh, what's amazing is that uh, some of the pieces have fallen off the little trim pieces, but I think I have all the original pieces, so I'll be able to clean those up and glue those back on there. Uh, this uh, board that the dial mounts to needs to be uh, glued back. This piece here, this gear, I guess you'd call it, has come off on the left side, and I find that the right side is loose as well. So we'll take those things off of there and uh, clean the old glue off and get it ready uh, to glue back. But before we get into that, uh, we'll do a nice cleaning of the cabinet to get all the old grime off of it and give it its best chance of, of looking really pretty. Well, 
My little trim pieces uh, have residue of the old hide glue. So I just kind of soak this in warm water and I should be able to scrape the majority of it off and just sand the edges and get it ready for uh, tight bond, which is what I'll go back with. No need for me to use hide glue on something like this. Well, I discovered that this fascia board was pretty much loose all around. So we're going to go ahead and pop it out of here and uh, take it out and clean all the glue off and glue it back in there properly. And that'll give me an opportunity to sand this out. Just scrape out the old glue. And it's very dry and brittle and coming right out. Go over it with some 120 and we'll come back with some uh, 220. I've decided to uh, glue this fascia back into the cabinet before I stain. So I've got some pretty good witness marks all around this thing and nail holes. So I'm pretty confident in exactly where it needs to go. Set it down in here. I'll just put some weights on here and we'll let it sit overnight. I don't see an easy way to clamp these little pieces that go up in the corner here, but they're not really load bearing, so I don't think I'm going to try to clamp them. They fit snugly in there, and we'll just let them sit for an hour or so. Got some pretty heavy scratches uh, on these little decorative elements here, so I'm going to take the finish all the way off. And it's coming off pretty easily because it's rather dry from all these years. And I think I'm going to stain them back in a lighter color. I think it would be kind of nice to have a little bit of a highlight up of this otherwise uh, monotone cabinet here. It's very snugly and it doesn't really have a load bearing function so I think I can just let gravity do its thing. Finish is not horrible on this clock. There are just a few dings that I want to get uh, cleaned up here and there are some places where the finish is a little bit oxidized so I'll sand that down and then we'll go over this with some dark stain and some shellac. I'm going to try to uh, have some contrast in the woods on this piece, so I'm going to do uh, a golden pecan on these lighter areas, and uh, we'll use a, an English chestnut on the rest of the case, so it may not make that much difference. I don't know. This wood is older, and it may darken right up with the golden pecan, and it kind of looks like that might be the case here. I'm glad I didn't decide to go any darker on this. I think uh, this golden pecan just kind of wets the wood and freshens it up without taking it too terribly dark. I think this is going to look really beautiful when it dries. So uh, we're going to let this sit for about 24 hours and then I'll be ready to uh, put a shellac uh, overcoat on it. liking the way it's looking. Came out 
a bit glossy for my taste, so I am knocking down the high spots here, the little nibs and whatnot, and I think I'm just going to finish it uh, with a paste wax. Well, there it is back in the case. Seems to be running well. I'm going to leave the dial off for a couple of days while I determine if I'm happy with the beat. And we'll put it back together. Well, there's the clock completed as far as I'm going to take it in this video. Uh, it's been run running for about three weeks now, and it's running pretty well. I've, I've been winding it on Saturday mornings, so it being an eight-day clock, but I suspect it would run a lot longer than that if I didn't wind it. So uh, that's as much as I'm going to do in this video, but there are a couple things that I failed to mention in this video about this clock uh, where it's, it's incomplete. First, you may remember that we replaced the glass on the door for this clock, and uh, if you look at Every original example of this type, type of clock, they almost always have some type of decoration uh, in this area on the bottom. So I'll look for a decal of some sort maybe, and I might add that feature to this clock at a later date. Another uh, thing that I failed to mention is this is an alarm clock, and it actually has the, uh, the actuator uh, on the cannon here, and it has the, the little wire connector and there are holes in the back panel where there was an alarm movement at one point. So I think those are fairly common uh, to find on eBay and things like that. So I'll watch for that. And at some point in the future, I may install that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.